Now welcome to the absolutely stunning Lake View Fisheries and this is going to be a video of a bit of a difference and we're actually going to work it out how to fish this place in real time. So I've set up a load of different rigs, I've got a few different bait options with, with me and I'm going to actually, as the day goes on, tweak my approach to find out how to get the most from this venue. But I can't wait, it's an absolutely stunning place, it's stacked full of fish. Let's show you how we're going to hopefully catch a load of fish. So Lakeview Fisheries, what an absolutely stunning place. And I haven't been here for years and years, but it's under new ownership now. And I think it's gonna be an absolutely cracking venue for years to come. And we're on Serpent Lake today. This is the lake that Ross, the owner said, get yourself on Serpent, you'll have a great day. So I think it's, I suppose it's pretty typical of a snake lake really. It's, it's 30 meters wide. We've got typical depths down to sort of four or five foot. Very, very typical of what you guys will be look, faced with if you choose to go on a snake lake. So. I wanted to kind of show you how I'm going to approach this as a first time angler. I've not fished this lake before and I want to just run you through a few different areas of the swim that will hopefully work here and more importantly will hopefully work on your fishing too. So we're going to target the far bank, we're probably going to target the middle but maybe more like shallow fishing and then we're going to target the margins. Two different ways of fishing it, we're going to fish maggots down one side and then we're going to fish, of course it's me, a bit of pace down the other side. Hopefully it's going to be really good. So let me just quickly run you through what we've got and what we've set up for the day. So that far bank is absolutely, it just looks fantastic. And I've had a quick plumb up. Now there's no like what I'd call mud lines over there. There's no shallow spots. It's quite deep. It's about three foot. And there's quite a steep slope past that as it goes up to the island. So what I've decided to do is come back a little bit into three foot of water. So what I've set up I've come back purposely down that slope a bit. The reason is I think that trying to fish on a, a too steep a gradient can, can make life difficult. So like I said, I've just come back a little bit and I found a little little flat sort of shelf. Still sloped a little bit, but much better. And what I've set up, I'm gonna fish hard pellets over there. And I've set up a 0.3 Diablo, lovely little float, two mil tip, diamond body, lovely and stable. I've got three number eight back shot just above it. I've got white zip. This is a short kit. I've got white zip elastic. But down here, I've got a little string of shots. These are number nines. And I've got that for a reason because when I fish on slopes, I just prefer to have a staggered shotting pattern rather than a bulk. It might just be something that I'm confident with, but in my head and in my opinion, it presents the bait better. And what I'll actually do is flick the rig down the slope and almost hold onto the rig until it comes into position on and sort of rests up on that slope and I just believe that, that presents the bait very well. I think we're targeting F1s and maybe small carp in this lake so I've gone for 011 hook length and I've got a size 18 B911 eyed on there with a little little bait band. Simple stuff really but I think to start my session off fishing over there with this rig should get me among some fish. So I'm really excited about getting on that one that's where we're going to start. Now for the track I haven't actually plumbed up a deck rig for the track. Might be a mistake, but I've got a spare top kit in case I want to flick one on during the session. But I do fancy feeding some maggots down the middle with a view to catching shallow. I've been told by Ross that they do catch shallow on this lake. So I think that that would be a good option. And on any snake lake, that is a good option. But I'm really interested in, I think the bulk of my weight it will be caught down these margins. I've had a plumb up down there and it's quite deep. It's, exactly 36 inches deep down the edge now down this right it feels like it's undercut i can see the banks undercut and i've been told there's some barbel so i think there could be some barbel to catch down this side there's some reeds it just looks great down there now what i'm going to do i'm going to loose feed maggots by hand there with a view to catching on the bottom but you never know we might catch some shallow too now the rig is pretty much the same as what we've used across there except i've gone for a heavier float a 0.5 I think when you're trying to lose feed and you've got a lot of fish potentially competing shallow, I need a bit of weight in my rig to get it through those fish and get a bit of stability. So I've gone for a 0.5 day blow for that. But again, it's just that string of shot, which I like. But this time we've got a 16 B911, just a spade version. For the other side, I'm gonna fish a bit of pea paste. It wouldn't, wouldn't be a Joe video without a bit of pea paste fishing or a bit of paste fishing. Uh, I think it'll work really well. Like I said, as I've been told there's a lot of like smaller F1s and I think that could be a good place to catch them. Now, normally I'd like to fish it straight in front of me, but I had a plumb up 
and it felt incredibly soft and squidgy there, so I didn't fancy that at all. However, when I plumbed up to my left behind me here, it felt rock hard. I use a foot, when I'm trying to plumb up on these sort of lakes, I'll always go in with a 45 gram plummet and it gives me a really positive reading if, and it gives me a, a chance to really find where that silt is. And I felt like it was a bit too squidgy there. However, swinging around here and I can feel that 45 gram plummet go down with a real crack. Rock hard it is. About two or three feet off the bank. Again, it's the same depth as down here. It's 36 inches. But this time the float's different. I've got a 4 by 14 Cypri on there. Now for paste fishing, for pea paste, because it's such a small bait, I need a thinner bristle. And I just find that this slim body shape works really well for it. So we'll show you about that, how we're going to use that. And then down at the business end, I've just got a little bulk, about eight inches from the hook. And what I'll intend to do is flick it out past the pole tip, let it settle underneath my pole tip, and then hopefully get some bites on that. And then I've got a size 14 B911 again. Simple, simple stuff. And then really, other than that, I've just got a little selection of shallow rigs. Like I say, oh, that's not my shallow rig, that one there. I do think we will catch quite a few fish shallow at some point today, whether that's down the edge or loose feeding maggots down the middle. And I've just set up, again, I've been in the tackle shop this morning on the venue. They've given me some great information. They tell me that the fish come really high. So I've managed, managed to set up three different rigs ranging between 8 inches and 12 inches. You can overshot your rigs here. I haven't initially, but I won't hesitate to do so. But all the rigs feature a 4x8 tinks. Lovely little float when they're feeding really shallow. And then I've got a little 3 inch hook length and a bait band and I'm going to band maggots on that. So simple stuff really. Orange zip. Can't go wrong. I can't wait to get started. We've got simple baits. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the baits now. When you come to a new venue, it's so important to stick to baits that you know work it's so easy when you look on facebook and you'll see oh they're catching on worms or they're catching on meat or whatever but you've got to stick to baits that you're confident with especially the first trip or two trips come with baits that you know and trust and make them work and then you can as you get more experienced at a venue then you can start looking at other baits but there's no point coming here and if you never fish paste but all the locals fish paste there's no point doing it if you're not comfortable with it so I've stuck to a very simple bait menu, stuff that I know works. Now, I've been told that casters are working really well here, maggots are working, working well, uh, worms obviously, and pellets. Now, I've kept things pretty simple. Rather than going down casters and maggots, I've just brought maggots. So, brought myself some nice, fresh red maggots. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna loose feed them down the middle and I'm also gonna loose feed them down this right hand margin. I can catch on the bottom and I can catch shallow with that bait. So it's a very versatile bait. I could even pot it across the island if I want to. So you can't go wrong with maggots no matter where you go. On the pellet front, I got myself a bag of the four mil fishery pellets. Nice and simple. That's what I'm gonna start on across there to the island. Uh, just tapping in a few of those and I'm gonna put one of those in the band. And I've also got myself a bag of the fishery micros. Now I've softened them up, given them plenty of water. They're going to be used to feed this pea paste line and what I'm fancying doing is just making little nuggets like that, little, not even a golf ball, like a tiny little pinch and I'm just going to throw them in fairly regularly but not all the time, just keeping it nice and tight. I've lined up with a far bank marker and there's a, actually a lovely little shadow here that I can just throw that little blob of pellets in all the time and I think that that'll be a nice little approach. And to go with that, I've got myself some paste. Now, to tell you the truth, I forgot my ground bait. So I went in the shop and there was a bag of swim stin. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to use that. And I just mixed it fairly stiff. And I'm just going to put on tiny little balls. Pea paste is exactly that. So just tiny little bits that cover the size 14 hook. That is it. That's as simple as we've made it. I could have brought other baits, but there's no need. I know that these baits work and I'm pretty sure they'll work today on Serpent Lake. Right, that's enough waffling on. Let's get some fishing done. Now, as I said, I'm going to start off across the island, but I've got to think about my other lines as well, and I want to start feeding them straight away. These F1 venues, the margins often work much quicker than they do on venues like where you're targeting bigger carp. Obviously, you're on top of the fish more on venues like this, and there's more of them, so they're more likely to come in early. So I'm ha I'll happily feed the, uh, the margins from the start. So all I'm going to do to start with is regularly 
every, every time I remember, throw two lots of maggots in there. And then on this side, I'm going to kick it off again, just by hand. And I'm just going to start throwing in those little, I'm going to call them grape size balls of pellets down there. And I've also got that track line to consider, which I'm going to feed by a catty because it's a bit of a swirly wind today. I'd love to feed by hand, but you've got to do it accurately. So we'll feed that. And I'm, I think that's probably going to be about a top kit and three sections, something like that. Nice place to to start feeding but let's crack on over there so I'm just going to pick out a four mil from my feed slip it in the band I'm going to go really careful to start with I'm just putting like 10 four mils in which is a nice little place to start and as always dip your pot I've got a few little holes that I've drilled in my pot and that water will drip out and it just helps the pellets break the surface tension and let's get over there and see what we can do now I've gone for point three to start with. I have got other rigs tied up. I haven't got them set up, but I've got them tied up. And I've got a bit of wind on. Now what I like to do to start with, I like to put my bait in first. As you see, I've got a tape marker on my pole. And I like to put my bait in first and then sort of lift my rig up, let it all come underneath my float and then lower it in. Easier said than done when it's windy. As you can see, it just allows everything to straighten up and then get into position. Oh god, that wind's actually much stronger than it <laughs> than it looked when we were setting up. And we've got to whenever the obviously when it comes to feeding your shallow lines, don't feed them at a detriment to what you're trying to catch on. So what I'm trying to say is, if every time I pick the catapult up, I move my float when I'm fishing the far bank. That's no good. Wait till you actually have a proper chance to feed it either the wind drops or when you come back. You want to be feeding it regularly, but not to the detriment of what you're doing. So I've got a little bit of a lull in the wind, so I can pick some maggots up and feed it without affecting what I'm doing too much. The last thing you want to do is half-heartedly fish across, because you're never giving it a chance to work, really. Oh, there we go. It didn't take too long, did it? It just shows you how instant mag uh, pellets are. Obviously they're so tuned into those four mils hitting the surface. But it doesn't take them long at all to find it. Let's see what we've got. Just a little F1 by the looks of it. Yep, just a little F1. It's a cracking start. Hopefully they'll get a bit bigger, but we're off the mark straight away. Let's get that one in there. So that was pretty good. We got a bite straight away. Just feeding those 10 pellets. So I don't see any reason to change. And this is what I'm trying to say. So now we've got everything in position. Now's the time to feed these other lines. Ducks are down there giving me a, a bit of cover. I love having ducks in the swim. I know some anglers hate it, but I like it. Now's the time to feed your other swims because you can do it properly without affecting your, your fire bank presentation too much. We caught a fish, so we'll do the same again. So we'll pop them pellets in first. There's 10 or so four mils. Lift the rig up. Easier said than done in this wind. And get that in. And then hopefully catch another one. You notice I've got the float dotted down. Oh, I've got the float dotted down. I personally, when there is a few F1s about like this, two mil tip dotted down is really nice for them. Oh yeah, that's more like it. That's what we want to see. Look at that one. Lovely golden F1. In fact, as you like that one, look at that. Beautiful fish. Yep, let's have a look at the hook hold. Can't even get my hands around him, is that? That's chunky. Nice hook hold. Get a disgorger out. And that is like the perfect start, really. We've not had any real liners or 
false indications or anything like that, which tells me that that amount of feed is, is probably about right, 10 pellets or so. I'd be happy just to continue doing that for the time being. No point changing things if they're working. Don't forget your other lines. You'll notice I put some maggots on this side of me as well. I just find it easier when I'm fishing that side to, to feed my right hand. I find that having, so I naturally fish from my left with the side tray, but I just find that when I'm fishing that side, it, it's a bit easier. And it may seem a bit like stuttery that I feed on the other lines, but I think it's important to do it properly. Ducks everywhere now. I think these tape markers on your pole are really important when you're dealing with islands and things of this nature. It's so easy to be sat off bottom or way over depth. So at least when you put a plumb up and put a tape marker on your pole, so that's the first time we've had them false indications that was, straight away. Now I must admit, we've got all this cover on this far bank which is actually screaming shallow fishing, as in blasting bait into the cover. It's quite windy today and I just, I'm not sure that that's gonna be the most efficient way to catch them. I think that would work on a, on a nice calm day. But I think I'm probably putting the fish somewhere where, because I don't think I'll be on this for very long if I'm honest. I think there's gonna be a better way to catch them. It's just a quick starter really. Often when you start across on snake lakes, you'll get a little runner, maybe an odd carp, those nice F1s that we just had. But to be honest, the other three lines are what I think I'll be fishing a lot more. But yeah, I reckon on another day, fishing across there and actually feeding with a catapult and firing baits into the cover would work really well. So we've had different responses, Chuck. We've had a few false indications. So I might have to just tweak how I'm feeding. Maybe that putting double the amount of pellets in might work better. We'll try that on the next, next go in. There's always a way, but this is... Uh, Few, too many line bites for my liking on this chuck. Right, a little, little drop in the wind so I can feed some more maggots down the middle. Yeah, I'm not liking that. Christ, how many ducks are in the swim? <laughs> See, so many indications. Look, it's hard to know what's a genuine bite. And that's just off feeding 10 pellets a couple of times. Shows you how. Right, let's do something different. Cause that's not quite right, that. So let's just put a few more pellets in. Try and get them down a bit more. You know, it's in my nature to uh, feed more, not less. Some people would want to feed a bit less, but I always find feeding a little bit more is more effective. I think with this tricky wind, this will get us off to a start, but I must admit I'm itching to get on the uh, other lines already. <laughs> just because that wind is making things awkward. But let's just try and sort this out. So we've put a few more pellets in. Hopefully that'll drag them down a bit, a bit more. There's a fishery I go to called Barbie Banks, and that is oftentimes just putting more pellets in works really well and as you can see there it, it works straight away only a small fish but it's a fish and a proper bite not a, a load of false indications so we'll try that again sometimes just being a bit more aggressive gets the fish down for just those few seconds long enough to get you a bite
So we'll do that again. So don't forget your other lines. Really important. There's a cracking fisher here. Came here years and years ago on fishermanies and stuff and probably didn't see it at his best, but I'll tell you what, it's cracking. I'll definitely come in here a bit more. So, not too far from me and Ross the new owners doing loads of work here and I think it's gonna be a uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Pull the elastic out. <laughs> I think it's gonna be uh, back well and truly on the map this place. over the next few years, which is good to see. That's in the mouth there, that. it took it on the drop, unbelievable. But you see that little tweak in the feeding, has got us two fish in the mouth. And that was just doubling the amount of pellets, it's amazing how that can work. I'll just show you it hopefully one more time and then we'll crack on. And then when we come back to it, we'll probably be fishing somewhere else. But this is actually it's great fishing already. You can see why people are raving about it. Here goes other lines. <laughs> Cracking shoal of baby ducks in this room at the moment. Let's see if it's third time to catch another one. I'll probably make a fool of me now. I've tried to get three. Oh. But that last one that took it on the drop, that is quite, look at that. That's just amazing, that little tweak in the feeding out. That's changed, I was getting all those indications and missed bites and then just filling the pot up. I've got a free fish really cleanly. I think that's a, a lesson how feeding can make such a difference to your swim. I mean they're great fish aren't they? Cracking f ones. I'm going to crack on with this, catch a few over there and then hopefully when you come back I'll be bagging up on some other lines. Right, so we've had a brilliant start over there. We've caught a couple of car, caught plenty of F1s, but I'm not gonna lie, the wind has started to get up and it is quite tricky over there. Even though it's only 13 meters, it's really whipping through here. However, it's not the end of the world because the middle of this lake is chocolate and I think there's a load of fish there ready to be caught shallow. Now, when I start shallow fishing, it could be when I'm fishing down the edge shallow, it could be out there. I always like to start on my deepest one. I think it gives me a good, like, guide to where the fish are going to be if i'm getting liners then obviously i need to come up and if i'm not getting any signs on my deepest fig then they might not be there yet so it's just a nice little way to just make sure there's some fish there and feeding so like i said i got tipped off in the tackle shop that the fish come very high here so i'm going to start at 12 inches just got that little 4b8 tinks four inches of line above the the float to the tip and you are allowed to overshot here but i'm not going to do that to start with i'm just going to go out and see if we can see what we catch normally and get a bit of a feel for what's going on. We've just got a single banded maggot on. And as you can see, the ducks are having an absolute party in this swim. Get out of the way, ducks. Nope. Nope. Get off. No. <laughs> see, the ducks are having a bonanza in this swim. So it might be. Yeah, oh, that didn't take a lot. <laughs> And I do think, I know them ducks are a bit of a nuisance, but I do think it helps when you're shallow fishing to have them in your swim. I think the, the disturbance, the noise that they make, just 
the fish just can't ignore that. And as you can see, look, different fish to what we were catching over there. Proper F1s. And that's the beauty of a banded maggot as well. Your bait stays on. Not every time, but a lot of the time. And you can get straight back out there. So that was a good start, wasn't it? Like I say, I've just set this one at 12 inches and I've got those other rigs as well if I wanted to go a little bit shallower. And you'll notice I always feed by a catapult, not by hand. I just feel like I can be more accurate. No ducks. Indication there. So that depth actually doesn't look too bad as a start of a 10. Plastic's working nice. I don't mind using the white one for shallow fishing, but when I've got a little bit of a ship, I, I quite like having a slightly lighter one, and this orange is really nice for it. Again, different fish to what we were catching across. They're like older F1s. I've got an 18 B911 on there. It's just a hook I've got so much confidence and faith in. Just It just keeps going, like when you're catching lots of fish. Rarely lose the point. Just a brilliant hook. That wind's bad. I feel how windy it's getting. Keep feeding those close-in swims as well. Yeah, I haven't even tried that paste one yet, but I think that that should get stronger as the day goes on. But we'll see. I mean, this is phenomenal, isn't it? Phenomenal fishing. Both lines have been full of fish so far. Get off. I haven't done any tapping yet, but I think when you've got all these ducks and stuff in your swim, I tapping can be really effective because obviously the fish are so getting so excited with all that commotion in the swim uh, tapping can be deadly maybe that we put the overshotted rig on in a minute and and tap and I think that that I mean it's good at the minute but that could just be an absolute bonanza when we do that real good stamp fish this is why I'm so keen to come off that far bank because if you want to get the most from your sort of session on these kind of venues, you do need to catch shallow, short, you know, the far banks are tricky places to fish, to be fair, and it's not often the best way, but it is a good place to start, as we demonstrated. I'm just getting the rig in is the hard part at the moment. Then ducks as they are. Oh, <laughs> see that? <laughs> this fishing is unbelievable. The F1 actually came up and tried to take my float. So what I want to show you actually is in the effectiveness of an overshotted rig. Because this is obviously fantastic. I'm going to just show you how effective the old overshotter can be. And if it is allowed, you kind of have to consider it. I mean this is fantastic. We're doing catching plenty on this but I just want to demonstrate how that can be even more efficient and even more effective. So we've got the same rig essentially. It's 4B8s. Obviously I've put a shorter rig on but I'm actually going to be fishing at a similar depth. Now how much you overshot it by is what the art of it is, I suppose, and I'm going to just put two number 10s extra on to start with and, and go in with that and see if that works. Sometimes you can put a lot of shot on. Extra. And sometimes, like, you hardly want any shot extra on, so it can be a, a bit of a balancing act. A couple out. I said I'd put two on and I only put one on. And this is where the presentation will be totally different. We're going to be tapping and flicking the rig when we're overshotting. And it can be just absolutely deadly 
on these kind of venues. Just stick that on there. And with the banded. I haven't seen any fish down here yet. Right, let's hopefully. There we go, how deadly this can be. quick as that and that's the difference obviously you don't you're not getting missed bites and stuff like that you're just waiting for that elastic to come pouring out the pole tip as you can see there it didn't take long at all and there's a reason why all these really good X F1 anglers are all overshotting now and it's that's exactly it I've brought five pints of maggots with me today, which I think is going to be about right for what we've, what we've got. I think. Where's that duck gone? I think it's going to be about the right amount of bait. Lovely big F1. You'll notice once I'm actually fishing out there, I'm not actually feeding as much. It's about finding a nice little routine. You tend to use more bait when you're not catching, but as soon as you start catching, you, you can back off and find a nice little routine. I love the F1s now on the shallow line. I can't believe how good the fishing is, to be honest. Better fish. Oh yeah. Look at that. Cracker. Look at him. The notice would be better stamp on this than they were across. Yeah, we caught a couple of little carp, but the average F1 is it's a much better fish on this. I'm just going to try add in another number 10. Like I said, it's, a, it's like a balancing act on how much, how much shot you overshot your float by. And I'm just going to add an extra one. Just try and be a bit more positive. That There's a lot of water movement with those ducks. And I want to make sure that my rig is stable in the swim. So adding an extra shot might just give me a bit more stability. You can see it wafting around a bit in the water, so... I'm going to give it an extra number 10, see how we get on with it. Yeah, I can see that. Much more positive strength, look. Much more positive than it was before. I know it's only one number 10, but obviously that, with such a tiny float, is quite a big percentage of the, the weight. And I think, <laughs> this was a match, I'd be thinking about how I was going to spend my winnings, to be honest. With the wind blowing in here like this and the fish feeding like this, it's just phenomenal. I'm just going to try. Sometimes I like to band double maggot, it can work really well, so let's give that a little go. So let's give the old double maggot a try. I think this could be quite good. Again, we've got, <laughs> we've got some more ducks sat down there as well. Ducks everywhere. Yeah, that's just deadly, isn't it? That overshotted rig is absolutely deadly where it's allowed. I say the tapping is, is bringing the fish right up. And they're absolute beauties. So I'm going to crack on with that. As you can see, the fishing's amazing. And when you come back, we'll have a look at a different tactic. We'll have a go on the pea paste. But yeah, I think we can safely say shallow fishing is working an absolute treat.
Well, the fishing, the shallow fishing in particular, has been magnificent. That's the word I'm going to use. If this was a match, I would just keep going on that shallow line. It's just too good to come off it. However, we all know that matches, especially, it's not always the dream scenario when you're just catching one of bung. And sometimes you need other approaches throughout the match to sort of keep your fish coming. And the pea pace that I'm about to fish now is one of those approaches where no matter how hard the venue fish is, as long as the water's warm enough, you'll get bites on it. It's just a brilliant banker method, whether you're fishing, uh, it's particularly effective for F1s, but it can work for small carp. And it's just one of my favorite approaches that I always set a rig up for it in the summer, especially on these venues of F1s. And I showed you the rig earlier, which is a four by four in Cipri. And I've been throwing little nuggets, just little tiny nuggets like that of micros down there since we started. I don't think it's going to take us too long. Now, one little detail is how far out I fish it. It's important to try and fish this where you don't have to break down. Obviously, you will miss an odd bite, so you want to be able to rebate quickly. So I fish it with a top kit and a short number three, and I just find that that works really well. Now, when it comes to the hook bait, it's just a small piece of this paste. And I've got a size 14 hook on, like I mentioned earlier, and I'll just mould that around the 14. It's, it's a soft texture, but it's not like dripping off the hook or anything. And then the actual technique to get the rig in position, hold the top kit on the very end, paste and rig in this hand, and then just swing it out past. So it wants to go out past the pole tip. So out there, just like that. And then with this short number three, I use it to then follow, I sort of feed it out, and I follow the, the float out. And then I'll get to the point where the float and everything's tight, and I can just relax my pole like that by pushing it forward. The float will pop up and we're fishing. Everything's direct. As soon as a fish touches that, I know about it. Now the next thing, when we're fishing this pea paste method, is hitting the bites. It's just like any paste method, missed bites can drive you up the wall. So when you're getting all your indications, just be patient on that bristle because nine times out of 10, just delaying that strike will lead to more fish in the net with this pea paste method. Now one little detail you might have noticed while I'm sat here fishing, I'm actually in my little bowl here. I'm always little making up my next nugget to throw in. I like to feed once a fish is hooked. I never like to feed on top of my float if I can help it. So I like to have a few little nuggets of pellets in my little bowl here, ready to go. And then as soon as the fish is hooked, I can just plop one over, over the top. When you're fishing pace, you want the fish on the bottom. So there's no point feeding too frequently because obviously you're just going to give yourself problems. I'll just get this going, a bit of a lift there. Obviously we're just trying to work out feed frequency. And this is a method that can work, it works in the margins like this, but it also can work straight in front of you as well. If you want to fish it with a top kit and a, a normal number three or even top kit and two, it works well. But if I can fish it where I can rebate without breaking down, then I think that that's when this method's at its best. And it's definitely effective for these little F1s. And I'll show you that little process again. So obviously the pole's trapped under my armpit and I just slide it so I've got a little bit of slack. I find that easier to put the paste on when I've got a little bit of slack. Just got the pole trapped between, underneath my arm. Get the next piece. I've already bait, obviously thrown that blob of pellets in, so we're, we're ready to go. Grab the end of the section, like I, like I mentioned, swing it into position, and then follow it out with a short number three. And then that'll just be set absolutely perfect. And I do find a float, like a Cipri, which has got a bit of, bit of a thinner bristle to say the Diablo we were using earlier. I do think it, it works really well for this, this method. The bait registers on that slightly thinner bristle a bit nicer. Once you get this going, it's one of those methods where you just kind of plod along all day. You, you just keep catching fish and it gets stronger and stronger and <laughs> can catch you out. Like, you know, you'll catch some skimmers, you'll catch some little F1s, you'll catch some car. It's just one of those little methods what just keeps you getting bites all session. Really good. And it's simple to fish. And the bait bill's quite small with this, you just need some micro to feed and 
like a handful of ground bait to make your pace because that blob pace that I've done there would be enough to probably last you two sessions as bad as it sounds. So as you can see I'm always getting the next ball of feed ready. I actually sit with it in my hand so as soon as I hook a fish I can throw it right on the mark and the swim's calm by the time I've unhooked my fish, dropped it in the keep net, and plopping it in the net. I'm intrigued, obviously this is a great method, but I think there's a big finish to be had on this other margin swim. I've been throwing maggots in there all day, and I think, a little bit like what happened out there with the shallow fishing, I think we could be in for some action like that. Sometimes when you've got those thicker reed beds like we've got down that right hand side, they can be great for shallow fishing in the margins. So we'll catch one more on this and then we'll have a look at that. But yeah, don't ever neglect this pea paste. It can be an absolute fantastic method. And like I say, particularly on those days where maybe the shallow fishing isn't working quite as well, this can just keep getting your bites. And it's a lovely way to fish. Another F1 on the pea paste, but I think the time is now to have a big finish on this right hand margin. Okay, so we've fished the far bank, we fished down the middle shallow, we fished that pea paste. I think the big finale is going to be down this right hand edge. Now, I'm not going to go in on the bottom. I've tried it off camera, I mean, big like this all over the place trying to get to the bottom, so I just don't think that's going to be the best way to catch it. I do think there'd be some barbel to catch on the bottom, but actually getting to them is going to be a problem because I know I'm going to catch some F1 shallow down there. At the minute, my little mates are down there. But we're just we're going to kick off with the overshotted rig actually i just think based on what we learned out there it's the best way to catch them so so my little process i like to feed a decent amount to sort of get the fish in the area chip out and then the next feed i just feed a little pinch just to, to get, get the fish really high obviously the more you feed the lower in the water column they'll get and I just reduce it, put my fish in, and I'll throw a decent amount in again. So they're sort of happy while I'm not there. And then when I'm there, I'm trying to get them to come up really high where they're easier to catch. It's just a little feeding pattern that rips really well when I'm fishing like this. It didn't take long. And the fishing here has just been so good today. <laughs> Can't believe it. I'm fishing double maggot now and I'm actually putting it putting them on the hook rather than banding them just a small detail right. decent generous amount and then as I ship out I get to my distance and I just reduce it throw a few more in get through the ducks and get dragged in <laughs> and this if you can catch him shallow in this situation down this edge like this you can do some massive weights when it's like this. I know venues like Tunnel Barn and you know, venues such as that, when you've got a lot of reeds in the margins, it can be a fantastic way to catch them. And the key is actually leaving it long enough. If you go in too early, you haven't gathered enough fish and you, you catch, like you sort of run out of fish a little bit. If you prepared to, like we've done today, feed it for three hours before going on it, be amazing. That double pinch works really well. Now one thing you'll notice in between the wildfowl is how much tapping I've done today. And it's not, you don't have to like thrash the water to a foam, although it did work actually on that occasion. But just a, a nice little gentle tap on the surface where allowed is really effective. Especially when you've got like all these ducks and stuff in your swim. Obviously the fish are quite comfortable with the commotion and it, I think it just gets the better of them. This feels like a good fish. This is. 
This feels different entirely. What's this? <laughs> trying to get in them reeds, whatever he is. This does not feel the same as what we've been catching. I think I might, I know what this is, but I don't want to say in case it comes off. Yeah! That shallow barbel. Look at him. Little beauty. What a cracking fish. I didn't expect that to get that shallow. Look at that. Beautiful. Not as soon as he up to I thought he was going a bit. Maybe the uh, more aggressive tap is the one for the for the barbel. But yeah, if you are allowed to tap, it's just such a it's so effective. These F1s are so tuned into noise that I just I think curiosity just gets the better of them. And they just come up and in between the ducks. I mean, look at that, that's just it's hard to imagine catching much faster than that to be honest with you. We're catching one pretty much as soon as we get in there. I'm going to put a normal rig on actually next jump because I just think, just to show you the difference. We'll still catch really well on a normal rig because the fishing's exceptional, but so it's a bit nicer if we see float actually going under. Lovely F1s. In a great stamp. Let's just pop a little dibber rig on. Got a little big head set up here. Set up. Let me find him. Where is he? Is that him? There he is. So I've got a little dibber. Right, so we've picked up the little dibber rig and I'm just going to show you the difference. Now, you, obviously, when you're tapping with this, you've then got a bit of slack because we've got four inches of line between the, the dibber and the pole tip. So sometimes that can obviously create missed bites, but hopefully it won't be too bad a bit of a problem. Hey, <laughs> wasn't a problem at all. Straining. I'm saying, well, it's another good fish, this. Oh, look at that. Big F1's on the proper rig. Look at him. <laughs> Beauty. That's what we're talking about. Look at that. If you got them lined up, you'd soon have a... An amazing weight, look at that, two pound. I'll just show you that again. I think it's obvious that shallow fishing is the way to win here. You know, I know the matches, obviously the fishing isn't as good as this in a match, but I'd still fancy a run of fish shallow at some point in the match, definitely. Certainly with maggots and casters. I just think that once the fish have spawned like they have now, you know, heading into June, fishing shallow with natural baits is just, just such an effective way to fish for these F1s. And I think it's worth saying that it's shallow fishing with natural baits because I think once the fish have spawned, they really switch on to maggots and casters. And I'd, I'd really fancy getting a run of fish shallow on, on this lake. On most pegs, obviously it's going to be slower in a match. That one there. It's going to be slower in a match, but I'd still fancy putting a few fish together. And unless it was really difficult, I definitely, I definitely rig up for the island in a match. But I think I'd maybe start on it and let all my other lines develop. But I'd be, I'd be coming off it quick. I know I would. Of course, it's good to cover your options, but. I think you could fish the pea pace down the edge and get plenty of bites and then fish up and down down the middle get plenty of bites and then if you were lucky enough to have a rush bed like this then this obviously shallow fishing like this is just the nuclear option really because it's just deadly so efficient so fast and actually 
we're not on the overshotted rig anymore and it's actually not not much slower to be fair we've obviously got our depth right that 10 inches of deep is the key depth today so yeah i think we'll wrap it up there one last f1 here at lakeview fishery if you're looking for this kind of fishing a bit of snake lake f1 fishing with a few carp mixed in definitely a place you should check out don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the very next video on the new fish channel